Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. We have finally cracked it. We have found a low cost camp in northern New South Wales, set right on a riverbank and it's absolutely beautiful. It's in Korokai. And you might be asking yourself right now, where the bloody hell's Korokai? Well, you're gonna have to go and get yourself a cold drink, get your feet up for the next 20 to 30 minutes, come along the adventure and find out. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? Well, this week we're staying in Korokai and we're going to use it as our base to explore further into northern New South Wales. We're staying in a great little caravan park here in town. It costs us $90 for four nights, so you stay for four but you only pay for three, which is absolutely fantastic value. And that is for power and water, which is great, but that's not the headline here. The headline is that we have a riverfront site. You can see it right there. Absolutely beautiful, but that's still not the best thing. This is the best thing. Look where the pub is. It's right there, literally across the top of those bushes and you're straight in and someone has a 60th birthday this week. It's going to be absolutely fantastic here in Korokai. Well, as I said a little bit earlier, we're staying in Korokai this week. We're at the caravan park, which is quite good, isn't it? It is a good caravan park. But there's only about, what do you reckon, about a dozen sites? Uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, there's, there's not too many, but you can look that up for yourself if you want to come and stay here. Um, but the host of the camp, he's really, really flexible. So we rung him up from when we left um, Skinner's Head at the caravan park there and said, look, we'd probably get there around 10 o'clock in the morning. He said, that was fine, so, yeah. Yes, no, they're very easy going. They are, yeah, and it's a great set of grounds. And as we said, it's very, oh, well, we haven't said, but I'll say now, it's very, very quiet here of a night. So it's a great place to sit down and just relax and do nothing. It's also a great place to center yourself if you want to explore this region. Yeah, it's another good place for northern New South Wales to, to get out and see the surrounding areas. Yeah, I understand the fishing here is not too bad too, because there seems to be a lot of people on their boats out there. Yes, very popular for fishing and water sports. Yeah, there's a tie-up point here right near the caravan park if you've got your boat in the water. There's also a boat ramp and Korokai has its own beach. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure it's a beach, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, we'll take you for a bit of a walk around, show you around town and um, then we'll go for a bit of an adventure somewhere, I'm not quite sure where yet. So this is the van park and you can see that all the powered sites run down here along underneath these massive old big trees, they're beautiful. And then on the other side of the road here you'll see all the grassed area, that's for unpowered or tents or camper trailers. And if you get lucky and you come here, some of them have these square concrete pads which would be great to put your tent on. Or your caravan, oh sorry, your, um, camper, trailer? your camper trailer works because it's going to level everything up for you. But yeah, it's a beautiful caravan park and as we said before, it doesn't get overrun by a lot of people because they just don't have the space here for a lot of people, but very, very peaceful, very, very quiet at night. All right, this is the boat ramp in Korokai. It's quite an interesting spot, in fact, because um, it sits on the confluence of the Richmond and the Wilson River, or junction if you like. So I'll just take you down here onto the pontoon. So the Richmond River is running from, you can see it up there, so straight up there you can see the bridge and stuff, and we're camped up near there in the caravan park, and then you come your way all along along here, and that continues to flow right up towards Casino and all of those places. And the river that you see, or the bend that you see here, all the way up to the front there, that is the Wilson River. It's actually quite a beautiful place when you come and stand in here on the boat pontoon and you look at the two rivers and where they join. I'll throw the drain up and give you a bit of a look around.
Korokoi has got a great waterfront area. Um, you can just stroll along. There's a bit of parkland here. There's barbecues, picnic tables. Of course, there's public toilets. A lot of history about the town um, as you walk along. And it's a great little walk in the morning along the river. It's so peaceful and relaxing. Not as good as the beach, but each for their own. Um, one thing you do need to remember though, if you do come here and you want to have a barbecue, say lunch or something, you cannot drink alcohol anywhere on the waterfront precinct unless you're staying inside the caravan park. Just taking a stroll along the main street of Korokai and it's, there's no one around, is there? No, it's a quiet Wednesday. Yeah, it's just a quiet, sleepy town, but it just reminds us, we had a look at it, it's, it's as neat as a pin. Like everyone's lawns are great and the houses are in good repair and all the shops, even though some of them are closed, they're, they're still quite well looked after. And I think some of that's got to do with the historical society because we've seen a few signs about that as we've walked along the street. But it reminds me of just one of those old movie sets. Does it? Yeah, yeah it's quite, <laughs> quite weird anyway, you judge for yourself. I don't think the town would have changed too much over the years other than a few cosmetic changes, but um, I'm going to leave that up to the expert because Alison's mother was born here. <laughs> if you decide you want to come and stay in Korokai for a night or two, it's got all the uh, facilities here that you think you might need in a small country town. So there's a post office, there's a butcher shop, there's a bakery, there's a spa supermarket, there's cafes you can go and grab a coffee at. And it's a great pub you can grab a meal at. Well, we've been having a little bit of a problem with our caravan. In fact, it's a big problem because as the weather's been getting colder, so is our shower because we cannot heat our water off grid. Well, we can as long as we do it through our inverter and our electrical system. For some reason, our hot water on gas has failed. I'm not 100% sure why it won't work. It all lights up like it should. It, you can hear the fizzo or the prizzo or whatever they call it flickering to light the gas, but it's like there's no gas or something getting through. Not 100% sure, so we need to go and get it fixed. And there's one job I just need to catch up on very quickly. Our toilet door has got a little bit stuck. And it's just because um, when it rolls along down the roads, particularly corrugated roads, it um, it just vibrates the little bolts up the top here or the little nuts up here loose. So it's a pretty easy fix. Um, there's a couple of things you need to do though. First of all, just up in the corners, I just cut a line, I've already done this, I just cut a line along the silicon. In fact, this is the second time that I've done this before. So I've cut a line of silicon and I left it as it was on both sides, that's easy. And then you have these little um, plugs that go over the screws that hold it in. And in this particular caravan, there's five screws that hold that on. All I do is just remove that plug. Just after you've removed the plug, the next thing to do is go along and just remove all of the screws. So I'll just get this one out and then I'll come back to you after I've got that out, or the rest of them out. So the next thing I need to do is just move this board back because I've now removed all of the screws and the silicon's been cut at either end. I've just done that with a thin Stanley knife. Um, and then all I do is I leave the top here so I don't, don't cut that silicon along the top there because otherwise the whole board will come out. You have to re-silicon the whole thing back into place. So what I do now is just fold up out of the way and that exposes the little nuts that we need to do within here. Well, I hope the GoPro gets it, but what you can see in there, there's two light locking nuts and then just above it, there's a little brass nut. And what happens is the locking nuts come down as you go over the corrugations and the brass nut loosens and it's the brass nut that holds your wheels in the wheel track. So you just need to re-tighten your brass nut and adjust it so that your door slides okay and then uh, do those locking nuts back up. But what I'd like to do is just put a little bit of Loctite on there just to make sure that it stays there in place because it's not a job, it's a very fiddly job. So I'll uh, got a little shifter which I'll stick in there and see if I can get around that nut. If not, I'll just try and work it around my fingers. Okay, the shifter's really hard to get in there but I'll give it a little bit just to get it going but I think the rest of it, I'm just going to have to try and tighten with my fingers. Anyway, let's... Uh, Give it a go and see what happens. All right, well, I've adjusted the nut as far as I can get or where I think it's right. And all I've got to do now is just do up the two locking nuts. So I just screw those up with my fingers. I apologize that my hands are all over the place here at the moment. It's a very weird crack to get into. I did put some lock tight around those nuts, so hopefully that won't do it again. And uh, we should be pretty right. Let's go and get a little spanner onto that and see if I can just tighten those up. And hopefully the door swings are all right. But just to check it, that's a thousand percent better than what it was doing before and hopefully the corrugations don't rattle it too far loose next time. When you're done and you're satisfied that your, your door's moving freely again, just um, push your, I don't know what it's called, I don't call it the pelmet, put the pelmet back down there, draw your screws back up and put in your white plugs 
and she should be good. I'm going to get the hot water fixed. Um, and I've been ringing around trying to get it fixed. I've spoken to gas fitters, plumbers, a whole range of people. Nobody's either available, they're not answering their phone. But the one guy who did told me that I need to see someone who specialises with Swift gear. Yes. Which um, I didn't do. I just went straight to gas fitters and things like that. So I've gone on to Swift and I've looked at all of their sites or all of their recommended repairers um, in the direction we're travelling. But I can't get in till I think it was the end of October. Oh, sorry, the end of April hour. Oh, gosh. Which is, I, <laughs> it's I, getting a bit chilly. <laughs> it is, and I said to them on the phone, it's a lot of cold showers between now and then. I know Alison from time to time prefers that I go and take a cold shower, but yeah, oh. that's not... <laughs> anyway, we have found a gas fitter in Lismore, um, and I'll pop up the name of the company just here now, and they've been absolutely fantastic. We told them what the problem was. They said they can see us on Thursday, which is only two days yet. Yeah, it was a very quick turnaround. Yeah, and they are a recommended repairer from Swift. So I'm going to take the van down there and hopefully they can sort it out for us because it's getting too cold or we're just using too much battery to um, try and heat the water for a warmer shower um, of an evening. So anyway, I'll let you know how we get on. Well, I'm happy to report that the gas hot water system on the caravan is working like the day that we got it. Uh, the boys at Horn Gas and Plumbing done an absolutely fantastic job. And I'm going to say it right now, their customer service was second to none. As soon as we arrived on site, Ian, the owner of the business, he directed us straight into a bay because they do book you to a time and that allows them to deal with you instantly. And he said that we wouldn't take too long. So he put us in the bay. The boys come out, they strip down the hot water system and start to diagnose the problem. And it did take them a little while to find it because it wasn't quite as obvious as they thought it might be. But in the end, they're able to find it and I'll show you what went wrong. All right, this is the circuit board that come out of our hot water system. And you can see um, that it's clearly covered in a red residue, which is in fact dust that we picked up as we've been traveling along. Um, the circuit board itself sits on, it's a, it's a gel circuit board. So rather than the dust, you know, just fall out when you might blow it with some air or whatever the case may be, it actually sticks to it. And in our case, it caused it to fail. Ian told us that uh, they deal with maybe four or five caravans a week that have a very, very similar sort of problem, particularly for people who drive their caravans off road. So certainly something to be mindful of. I'll show you where the, um, where the dust got in from and how we figure we might try and seal it up. Okay, this is the outside of our hot water service and you can clearly see that it has some vents in here and that allows the air to flow through and, and heat to escape. Um, but what also it allows in is obviously water and dust and dust is going to be the biggest killer of your hot water system as we've recently found out. So I'll show you inside. So this is our hot water system here. Now when the boys done the diagnosis, they took all this stuff out and they looked at the things that we look at. So as part of my general maintenance to the van, I generally get the air compressor out and I'll blow out areas all around here just to get all the dust out. But what I never knew was right here where the circuit board was, the dust was getting in through that small hole there. I had blown it around this area, but I didn't realize the extent of the problem that was being caused. And as I said here, that's what caused to fail. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of gaffer tape over the top of that, just to try and um, reduce the amount of dust that might be going in there. One thing you need to be mindful of though, is any cover that you put over the top of your hot water, and this is what the boys at uh, Horns Gas and Plumbing stressed to us, was um, you can you know cause it maybe a potential fire danger or an explosion. But I think in particular, they're talking about covering this. Now we may cover that when we get back out onto some dusty roads. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, so as you can see, I've covered the, um, that small gap there. Just put a little bit of bloody gaffer tape or 100 mile an hour tape over the top of it. I was keeping an eye on it over the next couple of weeks to make sure it's not overheating or, or anything like that. But I think most of the heat is generated in this area here. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on it, let you know how we get on. Here we 
are in Iluka. We just pulled up at the, um, is it the, uh, it's the Clarence River Fish Cattle and got some fish and chips for lunch. What do you reckon, Al? It was very nice. Something different. Yeah, they were pretty good. They weren't bad value. We got the fisherman's pack. It was $25 with an extra scallop. It was $27.50, but um, very, very popular. Heaps of people have come and gone since we sat down and had something to eat. Very popular. So I think people have come from uh, in their surrounding areas, come down here to grab their fish and chips for the day. Definitely. All right, so we'll take a walk out onto the um, the break wall where they have the marina here and just give you a bit of a look around. I look, if you're not sure where it is, it's on the opposite side of the river to Yamba, which you can actually see from where I'm standing, but I'll flick the camera and show you in a second. You can see over there in the distance, or you might be able to see on the GoPro some buildings, actually Yamba on the other side. The difference between here and Yamba is about uh, a tenth of the price, isn't it? Oh yes, it's um, more economical here oh. at, at Iluka. As I said, it's um, the old sleepy fisherman village. Yeah. It's been for many a year. <laughs> we stayed here a couple of years ago up in the caravan park. It's an older park, but it was quite nice. It had a good vibe to it. They had a bit of live music on a Sunday night. Ooh. I'm not quite sure if that's still the standard for today. I did look on Wookie Camps to try and read a couple of reviews, but I couldn't see anything about that. But um, it was quite nice, easy access. It's a, like a three minute walk to where we're standing right now from the van park. Oh, yeah. And there's a great little coffee shop directly across the road, or a little mobile coffee shop. He does a great breakfast, I can assure you of that. Okay, so this is the main street in Iluka. And as I said before, it's got all the things you need. It's like any other little country town. Um, it's got bakeries and, you know, cafes and obviously post offices and a little hardware store and things like that, but nothing too much. Bellum is only like an hour's drive up the road if you needed a major centre. And I think, um, it's about an hour and a half down to Coffs Harbour from here, but yeah, it's quite a nice little town, great little fishing town. I know a lot of people come here to fish on their holidays and do those sorts of things. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll go down towards the National Park and we'll jump out on the beach, or try and jump out on the beach. We'll see what happens when we get down there, but I think you can drive on 10 Mile Beach, but there are also some camping areas and stuff down here for the National Park. So while we've got the chance that we're here, we might just check them out. And there's also a beautiful rainforest. Alright, so there's a whole range of things you can do along the, the waterfront here at Iluka as you come out of town in the National Park. So, we'll just jump out and show you a couple of things on the way back. This is the, I think it was Bluff Beach, Victor Garrett? I think so, yeah. yeah. We followed the track down to, um, I think it's Bluff Beach. I'm pretty sure it's Bluff Beach. Yes. Yes, here in Iluka. It's, look, I'm going to say it's not my top 10 beach that I've seen today. There's some no. much better ones up the up the road. But having said that, it is overcast today and maybe it's not showing itself in its best light. True. But it is well worth the drive down here. But the one thing that I will say is there's quite a peculiar smell. And uh, on closer inspection, there's a lot of nesting birds here and there's a lot of uh, bird litter, let's say, all over the lot. Yes. Yeah, but well worth the walk down. There are nesting turtles, um, which aren't in season at the moment, but you can't drive on the beach um, for any reason unless you're down here as a professional fisherman and you're licensed to do so. And that's only during the netting season. That applies to professional fishermen and traditional uh, fishermen as well. Okay, so we just saw a sign that says to Woody Head Camp Area here in the National Park in Iluka, and we thought we'd buzz down and have a quick look. I don't think you can bring a caravan down here, but we'll check it when we come down. But the reason we are gonna come down is because we know that a lot of the people who watch our channel don't own caravans. They still love to camp as we love to camp, don't we? They do, yes. And yeah, we, that's how we started out with the old tent and swag. And when we came a few years ago, we actually thought this might be a nice place to come for a camp. Yeah, and a lot of people too don't like to stay in caravan parks. They like no. the, to be out in nature. We do, we love it. You know, mm. we, we try and avoid a caravan park where we can. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we'll take you down. We'll show you what they offer here. Um, for our own, from our point of view, it's what's different between national parks in Queensland and New South Wales for camping. Yeah. And hopefully this um, gives us a bit of indication because even though I know there's a difference in price, from some of the places I've seen online so far uh, in New South Wales for camping, they look like they're pretty well set up, good sites. So anyway, well, all will be revealed very soon, I'm sure. All right, so we'll do a quick lap around the campground. 
seems to be something here for everybody tents camper trailers caravans a lot of people here i mean it is the weekend though so it is it is obviously you need to book before you come in yes uh, yes you do all right oh, so yes. <laughs> we'll um just have a quick spin around just show you what it looks like So we're just coming to the end of the campground now. There's a big picnic area up here. Access straight out onto the beach. This looks really nice. Really nice. So just driving around this, like as I said, there's plenty and plenty of people here. Lots and lots of tents and camper trailers. And um, yeah, plenty of caravans, but it's all segregated. So looks like a good spot. If I can find the fees online, I'll just drop them in the bottom here and let you know. But what a great spot. No wonder there's no one up the caravan park. It is, and they've even got cabins actually. I saw like up to G, and they said something about cabins up there. So, a lot of variety, it's wonderful. Yeah, and there's a shop here too, which is uh, even better. Look at yes. that. Yes, and there's a dump point for your portaloos as well. So, if you've got your own setup, oh. you can maintain it, which is wonderful. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, what a great place. Oh, well, we might stick this on for lap two or three. Definitely. Well, we just tried to get down onto 10 Mile Beach, but I have to let the tyres down to get down. It's a little bit boggy. We've never had the car bogged before, and that's about as close as we come when we got down there, wasn't it, Al? It was. He wants to maintain his perfect record. I do. <laughs> We're at full tyre pressure at the moment. I was in two-wheel drive coming down the track, and the car stopped and the back wheel started to spin. So we dropped it into four wheel low and I put the air locker on and drove forward a little bit and then just reversed straight back out. It's a fantastic piece of driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all the first time on a beach in New South Wales and I nearly got bogged, but not today. We'll see. So we're just going to drive through. Um, New Italy, which I'm not 100% sure what it is. Anyway, whatever it is, um, this is one of the only donation slash free camps that we could find on the northern end of New South Wales along the Pacific Highway. Okay, so if you drive around the back of the Italian Pavilion, um, you come down the road a little bit and you'll see the sign into the rest area and you'll see us drive in, but there's a few vans in here now. She's not real level, so if you're looking for a level side or you don't like sleeping with your head facing downhill, <laughs> you might want to get in here early, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. There you go. They ask for a $10 donation if you stay. Oh, okay. Alright, so it's the only free slash donation camp I could find between here and, geez, Coffs Harbour, even further south than Coffs Harbour as we left Brisbane and as you know we love a free camp. We don't mind a free camp, yes. <laughs> or low cost. <laughs> well that's it for this week's episode. What do you think of Korokai? Yeah? I actually really enjoyed my time at Korokai. Um, it, was, uh, it was a great place to stop and be. It's a uh, nice and quiet and the people are lovely. Oh yeah it was an absolutely beautiful place and even when you live and you work full time on the road like Ali and I do some people think it's a massive holiday but you really do need to have a little bit of downtime a little bit of R&R &R, and Korokai was definitely the place for that. It was a great place. It was. So on to bigger and better things next week we found a free camp. Amazingly one exists close to the coast in New South Wales. <laughs> but we'll show you all that with you next week. But for this week, if you liked today's episode, please hit the like button before you leave. And if you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because it does help our channel grow. And if you've got any questions or comments about today's episode, just drop them in below and we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. But in the meantime, you have yourselves a great week. We'll see you next Saturday. See you next week. Bye-bye.